And God says, but I got, I got, I got, I got one, one instruction for my kids. You're my sons, you're my daughters, you're my offspring, but you're not me. You came from me, but you're not me. Let's not get it twisted. So that tree that's in that garden, leave it alone. Don't touch it, don't eat it, because the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. And your Bible declares, let me fast forward for the sake of time. Eve ate of the tree because she was deceived. Adam ate of the tree. And when they did, they died. God lost his children. They, they kept living physically. But he lost his offspring. They became estranged from God. Then they become sinful and wicked. And God looks at them and says, I lost my kids. And then Satan now moves into the vacuum in the earth. And begins to dominate because in order for Satan to rule, there can't be no kids. I'm going to set that on the shelf right there. I, I, thank you. I'm, I'm going to set that on the shelf for you to understand. Because Satan didn't come and snatch nothing away from them. He had to wait until God removed them. Which means before they lost God's image and likeness. Satan could not even touch them. He was under their authority. He had to seduce them for God to disinherit them, for him to begin to move into the earth realm and set up his kingdom. Which means wherever you see Satan ruling, there must be the absence of a son of God. <laughs> or at least a son that don't know they are son. And so now, and now, now, now God has lost his children. But the thing I love about God is he's omniscient. <laughs> he, he's all knowing. <laughs> and God told Satan, he says, he says, I, I don't want you to shout too long because I want you to know what they just lost. I already got a way to get it back. And that's when Jesus stepped down through 42 generations, came into the earth realm, wrapped in flesh, walked around the earth, and began to demonstrate such mastery and magnificence of authority and dominion and power and might. He began to heal and deliver and cast out devils and put everything in authority. He began to speak in such words. The Bible says his words had power. Yeah, yeah. Which means when you become a son of God, you got to be careful about what you say. Because you got so much power, you'll fool around and cause something to be created just by the fact that you said it. And Jesus walked around in the earth and nobody knew who he was until God revealed it to Peter. What you are looking at is the last Adam. Twofold meaning, number one, there'll never be a need for another one. Number two, what this one is doing is undoing what that one did. 
because nobody had ever seen a son of God in the earth. In order to see a son of God in the earth, you would have had to have seen Adam. You would have had to have seen Eve. And so Jesus shows up. Peter looks at him and says, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus says, that's what I came to show you. In other words, when you see me, you see what you should have been in Adam. You're looking at the offspring of God. And Jesus says, I came all the way down to show you what sonship looks like. Which means the revelation that Jesus came to show us was what a man looks like as a son. Now you've been with me, but the next five minutes are going to be turbulent for you. So put your hand on your head. Say, help me, Lord. Help my head. Help my head already. Come on, put your hand on your head. Say, help me, Lord. Help me, help me, help me. Because Jesus comes into the earth and he says, I came to show you. What a son of God looks like as a man. And boy, the Bible says, and we beheld the glory. Whew. We saw it. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. In him was life and that life was the light of men. That light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Uh-oh. Which means Jesus did what he did because he was a son of God. In other words, he came to show us three things. Number one, our true identity. Number two, the extent of our authority. And number three, the supernatural ability that we have when a man who is a son gets anointed. Are you with me? Come on. I got five minutes. You with me? I'm telling you. I'm 1135. I'm going to wrap it up unless you shout more word. Oh, wait. I ain't even there yet. Wait till I get there first. So Jesus shows up and does all these miracles. They're marveling at it. But then God gives Peter the revelation. You are the son of the living God. And Jesus looks at him and says, on this rock. Uh Uh-oh, I'm about to talk about you for a little bit. I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What rock is he talking about? He's talking about this revelation, which means the church ain't no organization. The church ain't no religious institution. The church are people born out of revelation of who Jesus is. Why? Because who he is, he is about to make us into who we are. Now give me one minute to mess with you. I got to drive this in you. The reason the enemy is wreaking havoc in our lives is because we've been going to church. And that ain't enough. We've been reading about Jesus. And that ain't enough. There has to be a revelation that Jesus was the son of the living God. What does that mean? That means that when I get born again, guess what I become? 
And there it is. There it is right there. And that's where the church been hung up for the last 2,000 years. Because we are willing to admit that Jesus was. We are willing to shout about it, sing about it, dance about it. We will admit that he can do it. He had the power and all that. But when you start talking about, wait a minute, while he was on the earth, he was the only one. But the Bible declares when he went into hell and back and came back up out of the grave after the resurrection, he went from being the only one to being the first one. Well, if he's the first one, that means there's got to be a second one. And there's got to be a third one. In other words, Jesus did come so we can have church. He came so that we would become it. And that we would be the church. Who is the church? Sons of the living God. 